Hello everybody, this is part 2 on how to make a shoot 'em up game in Scratch. If you haven't seen part 1 already, then make sure to check it out, link is in the description below. Anyways, in this video, we will be creating our first enemy planes. These planes will point and shoot towards the player. So let's start by creating a new sprite, and this sprite will be our enemy plane sprite. So I will just take a few seconds and draw my enemy plane. Alright, so now I have my enemy plane right here, and I'm going to want them to spawn on the top of the screen, over here. So, let's drag out when flat clicked, then let's hide this original sprite, because we're going to make clones of it. So, let's just add a forever loop, and then create clone of myself, and wait like 1.5 seconds. And now, when I start as a clone, then show, and go to... Y position, like, 188, and then go to operators, grab a pick random, put it in the X position, and let's say X position right here, which is negative 272, to right here, which is 221. So negative 272 to 221. And let's make the planes point toward the player plane. So point towards sprite 1, which is our player plane, and then let's make it so that when the enemy planes touch the um, bottom of the screen right here, then they disappear. So repeat until, go to operators, and then grab a less than operator, and grab a y position. So repeat until the y position of the enemy plane is less than, let's say, um, drag it here to see what the um, y position is less than negative 190. Then let's um, delete this clone. And let's make the enemy planes move like five steps. And let's try it out. So the enemy planes spawn like this. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna drag this weight 1.5 seconds in front of the crate clone. And let's see. So the enemy planes are spawning sort of weirdly. That is because I need to rotate it so Rotate your enemy planes towards the right, and that should be fine. So, I'll just do that, like so. And let's try it out. And they spawn like that. So they point towards the player plane, and then they um, move. And there are lots of bugs. So first of all, we want them to spawn um, more on top, so you can't see them actually spawning. So I'll change the Y to like 200. And let's see it again. And okay, a bit higher. Oh wait, I think that's not the problem. So make sure to center your plane to the middle of this right here. So you can select the center tool on the top right. And then I will center this on the middle of the plane like so. And now let's try. So right here. Now they spawn much better. So that looks pretty good. Now they don't hide when they reach the bottom of the screen over here. So we need to decrease the Y position. Let's say negative 180. And let's test it. Um, yeah, that's pretty good. Maybe a bit lower. So negative 184. Let's test that. Alright, I think that's pretty good. Um, maybe we can make it a bit lower, like negative 186. Just want the game to look smooth, so... Okay, negative 184 then. And let's make the enemy planes move much slower, like two steps, and make it wait like two seconds. So, this should look pretty good. Yeah, these move much slower now. I'll actually make it wait like 4 seconds, so yeah. Now, we want the enemy planes to shoot bullets. However, if you want to make it efficient, then it's not as easy as the player shooting bullets. So to make it efficient, we'll only create one sprite, 
and that's one bullet sprite. So create new sprite and then draw your bullet. I'll just make it a uh, yellow bullet, like the player bullet. Maybe red, actually. Yeah. Um, and I will paint it. Oops. Okay. Now we can't just make every individual enemy plane create a clone of this bullet because this bullet wouldn't know which enemy plane to start from and which direction it's pointing towards. So that's a problem. However, we can solve this problem by creating lists. And by having a counter variable, then the bullet will know which x position, y position, and direction it's at based on the counter variable. So this will make more sense when I actually do the code. So let's go to data and then create three lists. Let's call the first one direction. Click OK. The second one x position. Click OK. And the third one y position. And click OK. Now I'm going to hide all of these three. And let's also make one variable. Let's name it counter and click OK. So first of all, when flag is clicked, we want to set all of these to zero and clear all the lists. So set counter to zero. Uh, delete all of direction. Delete all of x position and delete all of y position. So let's drag another when I start as a clone and then drag a forever loop and then drag create clone of myself and then change the myself to sprite 4 which is the enemy bullet and let's just wait like one second before the enemy plane creates a clone of the enemy bullet we need the bullet to know where is the enemy plane's position and direction so to do that we have to go to data and change counter by one and then add um, the direction to direction and then go back to data add go to motion grab an x position add x position to x position and then do the same thing for y position so add y position to y position so I'll explain what this does so far so let's say we have an enemy plane and it is right here so every time, right before it creates a clone of the bullet, it changes counter by 1, which is a variable. And I'll explain later what it does, but for right now, it just changes it by 1. And then it adds its direction to a list. So right now, the direction of it is 90. So it would add a 90 to the list direction. So I'll change this to um, direction and this to direction. So it adds its direction, as you see here, 90 to the list. And it does the same thing for the x position and y position. So let me duplicate these and then show the x position and y position. And uh, as you see here, it adds the x position, which is 18, to the x position list here. And the y position, which is 37, to the list here. So now let's go to our enemy bullet sprite. So let's drag a when flag clicked and then hide the original sprite and then drag a when I start as a clone. Then let's show and then go to motion and grab a point in direction block and then go to data, drag an item one of something and put it inside of the point in direction block. Now let's put counter inside of item 1 and change the y position to direction. So now I'll explain to you what this does. Right before um, the enemy plane creates a clone of the enemy bullet, it gives the bullet like a number. So let's say in this case it changes counter from 0 to 1, so it gives the enemy bullet a number of 1. And it also adds the enemy plane's direction to the list direction. However, since there's multiple clones of the enemy plane, they will be creating multiple clones of the enemy bullets. Let's say there's enemy plane number two, and it wants to create a clone of enemy bullet number two. Well, since counter was one, because enemy plane number one changed counter by one, now counter will be two. 
because enemy plane number two also changed it by one. And since enemy plane number two also adds its direction to the list direction, there will be two directions in the list direction. Well, since the bullet created from the enemy plane number one has the number one, which is counter, then it goes to item one because that's the bullet's number of the list direction. Keep in mind there are two items in uh, the list direction. So for enemy bullet number two, it has a counter of two. So it would go to item number two of direction. And that way, uh, the clones of the bullets would know which plane to start at. I know that was really confusing, and if you have any questions, you can ask me personally, but I'm sure you'll understand later. Anyways, let's continue on. So go to motion and grab a go to, and then go to data, grab item one of X position, and then drag counter into item one. So the same thing as the direction, it goes to X position, item counter of the list X position, and then do the same thing for Y position. So item counter of Y position. And now let's make the bullets actually move. So go to control, grab a repeat until uh, Y position is less than, let's say, negative 170 or negative 179, I think. Then let's move 12 steps. And then after the Y position is less than negative 179, then delete this clone. So now if we run this, then this should work. Where are the planes? There it is. And of course, we need to rotate this bullet to the right. So, um, yeah, let's do that. Oops. I will just draw another one, so. All right. Now let's run this. And this looks pretty good. So if we have like multiple clones, then the bullets still shoot like this. See the bullets shoot um, and start in different um, positions. So that works pretty well. And I think that will be our enemy plane sprite. So yeah, that's pretty good. So anyways, I will end this video here. If you have a question or a suggestion, leave it in the comments below. And if you like it, then make sure to give it a thumbs up for part 3. And subscribe too, if you haven't already. Anyways, that's it for this video. See ya!